and niche content creators because uh, we're, we're doing both of them. I am here with Dendra Bates of the Amphibicast podcast, and we are talking about episodes. How do we, 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 we know how to make them. And, but then once we make them, it's like, it like feeds this beast that is ravenous. And once you make a, an episode, uh, it's like, thank you. May I have another, it's like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. now it's next week. Mm -hmm. So, so anyway, hello, Dan, say hello to, uh, your, your, your raving fans out there. <laughs> Hey everyone! Um, thanks, Bill, for having. This is the first time I've ever done any kind of live. So, oh, really, uh, yeah. So enjoy it. <laughs> I get to only, the only, yeah, only for you, Bill. Will I will I do this? <laughs> I, I'm honored. <laughs> oh, so anyway, we're talking about an attempt to uh, to keep our things, our our episodes relevant, and I suppose I'll you know lay down the 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 framework. Hey, James is here. Mm -hmm. James is here and uh oh blue collar. Hey, what's up, man? You know, blue collar. Hello, blue collar. Welcome. He's got some amazing, amazing builds. Check out his Instagram. He's he's got some really, really cool stuff. Wow. Uh, the wonderful thing about uh oh Howard. Hello. All right, we got a lot of uh good people. All right, so the one thing about a live is I can do this live. You say blue collar keeper? Yeah. All right, all right, we'll we'll check that out. But uh, so everybody, what we're talking about is keeping our stuff relevant. And uh, those of us like uh, uh, Dan's got a podcast, the Amphibicast. It's all about amphibians in his past 100 episodes. And he's got a lot of incredible information there. I've got Chameleon Academy. I've been doing it for eight years. And so I, I think I'm up to 300 some episodes and, and I, I'm on YouTube, I got 350 videos or something like that. It's like, the problem is that a lot of these things are meant to be educational. And uh, of course, they just get lost in everything. And so we're talking about how do we make it relevant? And uh, so anyway, Dan, yeah, go ahead. Let's talk about uh, what's been going on in your mind uh, regarding this. Well, it's interesting because it's, I mean, the, the frogs are going to go off nonstop. We love the you, frogs. You me. Keep the frogs. Um, we want the frogs. Here, here's the thing. Staying current in something like this is, it's easy and it's hard. It's, it's easy because you have a lot of great people out there who put out a lot of good content, people who I can draw in, inspiration from. Obviously, you, you Dylan, um, Animals at Home. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of people that I'll actually watch or listen to your podcast and get an idea of right well this is what they're doing this is what works for them how can i translate that into something that's going to work for me but it's also bad because this is as a niche content creator there's a limit to what you can draw from this well so if this was a podcast about like um i'm trying to give a paranormal is a great example because i listen to paranormal podcasts um that's a much deeper well to draw from because mm -hmm. that's huge Dart Frogs is a relatively small community. It kind of became the focus niche of, of my podcast, even though it covers broader amphibian content. But, um, you know, there's there's not – I reach out to researchers. I reach out to keepers because it's an evolving thing. It continues to grow. The knowledge base continues to expand. But it's not going at the rate of other, you know, areas that you might want to have a podcast or a YouTube channel or whatever about. So it, it does become somewhat limiting because, I mean, you will, you know, just as well as I do, you have a very, very specialized niche that people are going to be very, very adamantly into it. But there's, you know, there's limits to what you can do. You know, like, for example, um, I, I haven't been releasing episodes necessarily every week. I've been kind of doing bundles of like two weeks or three weeks or whatnot, because I want to provide people with a good experience, but I don't want to constantly repeat myself. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to revisit a topic, I want to revisit it from a different angle or from a new perspective or with a new person. So I found that some of the other podcasts that have been out there, especially like the you know animal podcast is, you know, they did an episode back in say 2018, 2019, and then they do the same episode in 2023. The question is, the same people who have been along with you for the entire ride, are they going to notice that and say, well, he, he already did this or does your audience grow in such a way that they're going to 
appreciate um, something they may have never heard before. And I, I caught that with the artist series that I did. I, I did a two part. It's gonna there's gonna be more episodes to it, but the way the scheduling went, that's it started off with two parts. And um, I uh, I had you know an idea of what I wanted to do. I wanted to get two people who were you know artists you know that could apply to this you know type of community. But um, you know I felt bad leaving a week out. But I said to myself, I don't want to just you know phone it in and and do something that's going to be either a repeat or something that's not going to be really relevant and have people say you know what was that. So you know moving forward, there's going to be weeks where I'm not going to put on an episode because there's other stuff going on. I mean even like this week, I didn't put anything out because you and I were going to have this live stream. I never do a live stream, so if anybody's interested in my content, I right, bang here you go. <laughs> but um, it, it is it is hard to stay relevant because. You know, you, you, you commit so much time and so much effort into developing these topics into episodes, and then week after week after week after week, they get buried in this big pile of, of more and more episodes. And with the artist series, I sent out a little thing on Instagram asking people, you know, who do you want to see, whatnot. And I, I can't get to everybody. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I can't. Um, a lot of great suggestions, and I ended up with two great people. I'm really, really, really happy I had um, um, two, two wonderful people, two wonderful artists. But, um, you know, people re suggested a certain person to me, and I got a lot of responses asking for this. This guy's a photographer. is actually Zach Hare. And I had to remind everybody I had Zach on the show for episode 50. And a lot of people hadn't caught that. And so that kind of said to me, well, um, maybe you need to do this in such a way that people are going to be able to see or not see, you know, hear older episodes and be able to revisit that content you know i don't want to i don't want to air reruns but is that something that's going to benefit new listeners it's that something that might people you know people might want to hear like best of or whatever i don't really know but the fact that i had a tremendous i mean zach Hare is a great photographer i had him yeah, on yeah and people didn't realize that i had him on and you know it was a couple of years later he was on episode 50 now we're at like 135 so uh, I, I felt I was concerned, you know, for the listeners. I wanted to make sure everybody was able to catch up and stay, and they could stay current. So the issue with me is, you know, do I bang out episode after ep episode after episode in a very like rapid fire succession, or do I put episodes out and let them kind of sink in for a little bit? I haven't really figured it out. You know, I've been communicating with 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 listeners, and I mean, you and I talk about stuff like this. We had a you know a podcast thing going on. You know, I, look, I talk to you. I talk to, you know, Richard Stewart. I talk, I haven't spoken to Dylan in a while, but, you know, we, we kind of confer and decide, you know, what's working and what's not. And I, I try to keep it a nebulous thing. I try to experiment because, you know, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, it's not necessarily having the desired effect. Maybe you need to tweak something to change it. So. All right, That's well, I'll give a long convoluted answer to that. But. <laughs> My, yeah. Oh, by the way, anybody who's uh, listening, this is interactive. If you have questions or comments, please put them in there and let's talk about it. Uh, you know, Dan and I will we'll talk back and forth, but we really uh, would love to interact. And that's what this uh, this uh, uh, forum is for. And quality over quantity, in my opinion. Uh, now, I would, when it comes to redoing the episodes, uh, in my opinion, I think that's okay. Uh, say I, I have about a two year window. And then if I, I, I am okay repeating an episode in two years. But the thing is, it's not really a repeat because uh, it, with the chameleon thing and even the ret entrepreneur, all of the stuff I'm doing, I am living that life and I am aggressively pushing it forward, both in the community uh, and my experience and my ability to present it like hydration or UVB or any of that kind of stuff. So even if I repeat, say, repeat the topic, it's, it's like there's a different perspective because I've grown. And so I just, I just do it. And, and also I have so much out there. I forget what I've done. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> so I'd say, wait a minute, have I done this before? And I figure, well, maybe if I haven't for, uh, remembered, well, this is, this, is, this is what gave me hope. I don't, well, not like I was hopeless, but I 
watched your video. Christopher with... loves your show, by the way. What's that? Oh, thank you, Christopher. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I listened to your last episode of the Chameleon Academy with, oh, God, what was his name? Peter Nichols. Peter, yes. Yeah, and yeah. I, I know you've done many different episodes on chameleon hydration, and I'm not much of a chameleon, if I'm nothing of a chameleon person, but I, I watched that, and Peter was really interesting, really engaging, and I, I listened to the whole thing, and I actually took a lot of that away in terms of things that I could apply to certain species, even though you had done hydration issues in the past, you kept it, you kept it current by doing a fresh take on it, because I've been listening to your podcast a long time, and... I remember you doing episodes about hydration and it was, there were different periods throughout the course of your podcast that you revisited it because there was a new take on it. And mm -hmm. the issue with, um, that, that, that Peter brought up about using a fogger to keep chameleons hydrated, I, I started thinking about it and I realized like, wow, this is, has absolutely, it's the same topic, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the previous topics because now it's a fresh, a fresh perspective. And I actually, believe it or not, started thinking about my own husbandry with my with my snakes. And I found that um, my snakes that, that appreciate higher ambient humidity are drinking less and seem to be happier with the, the higher ambient humidity. So I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, I, I may have been keeping things too dry and, you know, it might not necessarily just be the ambient humidity. They might be drawing hydration from the air in a similar little way that the chameleons do. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, but it got me thinking on the idea. And mm -hmm. I felt like for your perspective, it was a great way to revisit a topic without completely repeating it because you had somebody new to come on and talk about it. Yeah. And also that isn't just like, oh, okay, I'll do something on hydration. The progression of hydration has, it's been an uh, active growth personal growth for my part and that's one of the greatest growths for my part during the entire podcast and if you go back to 2016 i did an, an episode on hydration that in 2018 uh I, I had a completely different take on hydration i had to go back and change that episode and since 2018 i've been experimenting with fogging i've been working with other people and then finally this week said okay it is time that we take the next step for the entire community and so uh, this this is the advantage of uh, me living the life it's like i don't ever have an issue as to what do i talk about the issue is always what do i have time to put together and uh, that that uh yeah oh okay yeah james actually james <laughs> cross he was on the uh the live session that uh, if you want to see a little bit more about uh, the humidity and the fogging, you can check out the uh, live session on YouTube where uh, uh, brought Peter on and then James was here. And uh, and actually, <laughs> Sean from uh, the Reptile Show Reporter, he was on it too. And uh, we really, really worked uh, some more ideas. Um, but this is... This is the uh, problem that we're talking about here is I had so many issues about uh, episodes about hydration and a lot of them go well together. It's like, how do I make sure that those aren't lost to antiquity? And so people can, mm -hmm. uh, can access them. And the only way I'm going to be doing able to do that, I think is through a, a website, uh, unless they're YouTube videos and I can do a playlist. I got to have a website or else there's no way to link all of that information. That's a good idea. That's honestly a great idea. I didn't even think about that, about lumping topics and me. Get, I haven't gotten very far with the creation of my website. I, I know you released this episode and I talked a good game, but I'm still really, really behind with it. But um, yeah, that that's, I think that's a good idea. You know, you clump certain episodes together on just, you know, a, a banner of a certain topic. I think that could be pretty useful. And, um, you know, like the other thing is like with, with, with staying current is like you make mistakes along the way because the stuff that I talk about today and you talk about today might not necessarily be accurate a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, yep, we yep. might learn something completely different. So then there's a double-edged sword because you got to ask yourself, do I want to 
have older, maybe antiquated information out there where it might be uh, used by someone who didn't necessarily catch up with what's current. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, these are all like, you know, moral quandaries that I have constantly because I don't know. You know, I, I want to keep the show current, but at the same time, I want people to be able to revisit old topics. I, I don't know. Well, if you have your website or a playlist on YouTube, it's like you can keep that thing updated. And I mean, both YouTube and podcast, if there is nothing there to constantly be pushing it up to the surface, it's just going to disappear. And the only people that are going to listen to it are the ones that are so dedicated that they just say, okay, I'm going to binge every single episode. And, and one thing that you can consider is, I mean, YouTube has now started their YouTube podcast. And so that may be something that, uh, that, that would work for you. Yeah, that's, I, I haven't heard anything from Buzzsprout, which is the hosting site that I use. They emailed me maybe about a month ago. You and I talked real briefly about, I think the last time you and I messaged each other and, um, I'm looking forward to it, but I don't know what's involved. I don't know if the podcast will just show up there on YouTube or if I have to submit it or what I, I'm assuming it'll probably get listed by bus bus spot regardless. But, um, yeah, this is, that's not the way uh, YouTube is working it right now. They are not oh, going gosh. to uh, present an RSS feed, at least not now. Okay. Uh, they may accept an RSS feed, but then that would be on their YouTube music app, which is something different. All right, Maybe that's, that's where I'm, I'm misguided then. But what you would have to do is set up an Amphibicast uh, YouTube channel and then take your podcasts and put them to a still picture. Yeah. Now, that used to be the kiss of death on YouTube. Yep. Uh, people hated that. Yeah. That's not the case anymore. And I, I, I will admit I was I accidentally tested this uh, because I did this before and I realized this is a disaster. Uh, but I accidentally did this when I was playing around with YouTube podcasts and I ended up with a, uh, a, a, I put on a podcast that was just to a still picture, just to my show art and to my horror, YouTube put it on my feed. I, I thought, okay, it's going to go into their little podcast bucket. Nope. Nope. It's going to go onto your feed. Uh, and so I, I was, I assumed I was going to be losing followers, hmm. uh, but the, opposite happened it was one of my a, a more popular than some of my videos i gained subscribers and so i i think things are changing as to how people use youtube uh and i've done that since uh and the videos that i've put up the the audios that i have put up have actually done as well as my videos um, I try to, uh, now if I'm going to do that, I try to lessen, uh, lessen the shock. And I have a video intro saying, Hey, okay, this uh, video is going to be a, this, uh, is an audio podcast and it's going to be about stress and chameleons. And so, uh, I invite you to, uh, sit back with your coffee or wine. You don't have to look at anything and just listen to this experience. This is an audio only experience. And then I have my podcast against my show art and, People have have accepted that just like they've accepted any video. I tried doing that uh, uh, maybe about a year ago. I tried uh, syncing the audio with a single picture. I usually the, the default photograph that I usually use is um, is uh, one of my file babies, the bicolor. That was the species I kind of based the logo on. And it was you know the yellow and green kind of became the you know the show's colors. And um, I, I did it with like one episode, and it was. I think I did it in iMovies or something like that. And it was, it was a bit involved, not really involved, just time consuming. And then I, I did that and I'm like, well, now I'd have to go back and do this for every single episode. For me at this point, it's just not realistic. So the question is, you know, where do I want to go with this? And I've been yeah. pretty, pretty like proactive about just being audio only, but, um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I'm, I'm just, I've never been a video person, which everybody kind of knows. So I wouldn't want to go through all that effort unless it was going to have a substantial, you know, a substantial conversion. But well, if you um, were going to be doing it, I would say just 
experiment just start with wherever you are right now you know mm -hmm. don't go and try to do 100 episodes uh just don't don't try to catch up just start where you are now and see what happens yeah i thought maybe doing something um you know maybe it's like starting with, with, with you know starting wherever i am whenever i choose to do you know, episode 100 and whatever um because trying to go back and do that with probably close to like 200 200 at this point probably close to 300 hours of content is going to be a little bit much even for me yeah i guess you, you also have to say what do you what do you want out of it it would yeah. it would increase your reach you would uh, tap into the youtube audience but is that uh, is that important to you i don't know to be honest i mean i, I mean you got to ask yourself wh wh you know, where do you want to go with this what do you want to do um I don't know. I mean, I create a, a very, very niche type of content in a very, very niche type of, of, of media. Um, you know, there's, there's thousands, if not millions of podcasts out there. And I don't know if YouTube is going to be a goal for me because it really is. It's, it's to me, it's, it's an audio media. I mean, maybe I'm being closed minded, maybe I'm being old fashioned, but I, I don't know. I mean, plus I'm also kind of a camera shy person. I mean, despite the way I may come off, I just, I couldn't imagine doing like, you know, editing audio and video all in one, you know, in one, in one you know, sitting. Plus the other thing is a lot of the guests that I have gotten have also come on under the condition of they're not being video. A lot of people out there are camera shy and they don't want to be on camera. So but are I'm you still getting it. that? What's that? Are you still getting that? Yeah. Yeah, really? there's a lot of people that don't want to be on on video for whatever reason. I mean, you know, sometimes people, you know, look, you know, it's seven o'clock on a Thursday night. You know, you know, hey, look, you know, you know, I just got home from work. I mean, you know, my my hair's a mess, or you know, I came in from the field, and you know, not a huge margin, but I'd say maybe like, you know, one in one in ten, one in twenty people. Um, mm -hmm are actually happier with the fact that there's no video involved. And again, in, in this type of niche, you kind of have to, you know, you have to accommodate people because, you know, you start, you know, you, you don't want to eliminate people. You don't want to, you know, potentially alienate someone who'd be interested in doing the show just because of video. I don't yeah. know what it is. Some people, especially scientists, scientists are usually not really big about doing, doing video. I, I don't know what it is. It's, you know, but you know, look, look, it teaches well, own. You know, I, I don't know. It, it it was never really one of my one of my goals because the other thing with YouTube is, you know, the, the goal with YouTube is to obviously record, do whatever you want to do, you know, with with your content. Obviously, people enjoy making a certain content. That's where they get into it. But the goal is, well, it, it's either to you know to make money, which is fine. People should be able to make a living off of their their content. Um, but I know for a fact that to you know, really make money on YouTube, you have to, you know, you, you're going to be in a small percentage of people and you have to really, really, you know, work at it. Yeah. And from the people that I do know that do YouTube full time, you know, they, they enjoy it, they love it and they, they make decent money, but it's not just YouTube, it's other sources of income. And ironically, what I found is, especially this year is, you know, doing this for money, it, you know, it, 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 it's a lot of work. It is. And it's for, you know, minimal return you know i mean you know, you know I'm, I'm not joe rogan here um you know there there are people who do make full time they make six figure incomes off a of podcast but like i said they're drawing from a deep well that they can pump out content they know their audience and they you know can do that um and some of them do it completely without youtube i know a couple of podcasts that exist you know hosts make a full-time living without doing anything on youtube other than just bare minimal promotion stuff so it, it can be done and I feel like I'm already putting a lot of effort into this media through through the audio of the podcast. I feel like if I if I was going to convert over to YouTube, I'd have to kind of convert my whole operation. I can't kind of do like 50-50. I don't know. I don't want to close the door on it and say that it's never going to happen because I, I really shouldn't say never. But it's something I'm, I'm considering. I would just want to see like uh, I want to see it to be worth the effort. Yeah, the well, the question of, is, yeah, what would you want from it? If say you got a hundred more listeners, what would that get you? That's but that's you're right. That's the plus aspect of it because if you're reaching new people that wouldn't necessarily listen on 
Spotify or Apple Podcasts, or it's, it's on Amazon now too. Um, a lot of people spend a lot of time on YouTube, and honestly, I'm one of them. I I love watching stuff on YouTube, but if if that can turn into a conversion with with a greater audience, then that's that's great. That's why I was hoping naively that YouTube would be able to incorporate an RSS feed into its streaming service. Um, I was hoping that that would happen, but you, you burst my bubble bill. So I, oh, well, <laughs> it's obviously not trying happen. to, they're trying to compete with Spotify. So I, yeah. I am absolutely certain that they are number one, going to have an RSS feed to send out to everybody else and that they'll accept it at least for their music app. Maybe yeah. not for their, I don't know if they do it for their. Well, video. Let me ask, let me ask you a question. What, I know, I, I know the chameleon well, it was started out with the chameleon breeders podcast, right? Yep, you've yep. been, you've been doing this for a long time, yep. much longer than I have. Did you, you didn't start out with YouTube though, right? You graduated into that after doing the audio for a while, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. I why am you, video under protest. But why did you get into YouTube? Like what was, uh, what was because, the motivation for you? Because uh, part of my outreach and mission is to be educational to beginners. And I am a somewhat sophisticated podcast. I'll say that. I mean, the things I go into are pretty meaty and they're really meant for somebody who wants to dig into chameleons. And so uh, that kind of person does find my podcast, but one of the biggest things I need to do is get to the people before they are part of the chameleon community. And so that is number one reason why I went on to YouTube is to reach people before they type in, okay, chameleon Facebook group and stuff. Because <laughs> usually when people say, okay, I want to be part of a group on social media, they already have the chameleon. And so I really want to get to them where they are before they get their chameleon and youtube is the natural place for that and, and also i mean I, video is the way everything is going and so i i'm i do have to keep up with the times mm. uh, so oh, we got a question here uh this is howard can you use social media just for name recognition reputation Advertising is so expensive, so creating social channels can be a great way to increase name recognition as well as reputation. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll go first on this one and say absolutely. Social media is a great way to get your name out there and develop a community. I mean, obviously, I do that on Instagram. I have lives on Instagram. I have lives on YouTube. And it's just like creating a community. Uh, the one thing about it is every single channel that you bring, uh, you you create, is an investment because you can't just put stuff on there. You have to nurture the audience on there, and, and it it takes a while to really build up an audience. So, yeah, there's a lot of work for every outreach if you want to do it right. Um, what do you think, Dan? You're, you're on Instagram. Um, yeah. I mean, the only social media platform that I use is Instagram. And I was originally drawn to Instagram because it was pretty neutral. It was just photographs. And I found it beneficial because you could add a, a video. Not, well, not well, now you can't add a video, but you, you could add a visual element to audio. So if someone wanted to listen to an audio, I put up something on Instagram and then that's the hook. And hopefully that turns into a conversion. So if I put a picture up of a dart frog and someone likes the post, whatever, you know, I put something in the, in the text, you know, be sure to follow the podcast, whatever. Um, you know, the idea is that visual impact turns into an auditory experience for the listener. So that t t for a while on Instagram, that seemed to work pretty well. Then Instagram kind of degraded, we'll say in terms of quality. And I'm just not <laughs> seeing the, I'm not seeing the, the, the caliber of, photographs that i used to see two or three years ago i see a lot of a lot of reels and a lot of short form video which is great but you know what you're not engaging with that you are scrolling through it like all right oh that's funny that's funny oh that's pretty cool and then you know you pass it by and i felt like with instagram being on a a slower pace before the short form stuff 
I felt like that lended more into directing people to, to the audio part of it. At least that's, that's the way I perceived it. But, um, uh, I'm not, I mean, I'm not active on other social media platforms because I just, I didn't really have much of an interest in it because there's this, there's so much nonsense that goes on in there. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to be part of that. I mean, maybe I, sh I kind of shot myself in the foot, but you know, I, I don't want to be part of, you know, this group says this and this group says that, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe I should, maybe I should get involved in it, but I, I really didn't want that to be the goal. I, I wanted the podcast to be very, very neutral and I didn't want it to fall into the whole, you know, Facebook fiasco. And unfortunately there's just not a lot of other, you know, th th there's forums and whatnot, but you know, I can't go on a forum and like hijack the forum to promote my show. That's just wrong. Plus they'll boot me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it, uh, you know, that's a great question. Um, you know, what do you do? Cause it, it's, it's a balancing act because now you constantly have to reformat your, your approach to marketing the show based on whatever social media is doing. And a lot of times that moves a lot faster than you can evolve to change your model with it. So it's a matter of not getting caught, you know, finally becoming current with technology that's outdated by two or three years. I guess that's the, you know, I guess that's the only way I could put it. It's it's it's, it's hard. It's it's difficult. It, it seems like it would be easy, but trying to stay current and and relevant with the social media aspect of it, that you know that catches up fast. What is important to you? You're you're in an interesting situation because you you have done this. You are over. Uh, you had your hundred podcast episode milestone a while ago. So mm -hmm. this is a serious thing. Very few podcasts get past, I mean, a relatively small amount get past 10 episodes, much less 100. And so you're you're dedicating a lot of time to this. And I'm wondering what is, what what gives you fulfillment? What do you need? Do you really need more listeners? Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's plenty of times where I ask myself, you know, why do I do this? And I, I have developed a very good listener base. I have, you know, a decent number of downloads for a podcast that's essentially that's so it's audio only. And, um, you know, I obviously there's there's other podcasts out there that I do c compete with in one way or another. I have, um, you know, there's there's a lot of them out there. I mean, there's no there's nothing that focuses specifically in amphibians, so I kind of had that on a lot, but. Ideally, yeah, I would like to have a, a, a bigger audience base. Yeah, you know, but I mean, when they have the choice to listen to a podcast about chameleons, I, I know that's a <laughs> tough thing to like, like uh, be up against. It, but the point is, see, this is the thing. I could listen to your podcast even though I have no chameleons because I take things away from what you talk about in, in your show, your content, and translate it into things that could apply to me. And I do have that that dynamic to mine as well, where I have people that, you know, may only keep one or two frogs or, you know, they're mostly reptile people or whatever. But, um, I feel like there's a certain vein of podcast out there and it's, you know, for me, it's like walking amongst giants. Like I'm happy to be able to be on the same high level as people like you, you know, Dylan, Richard Stewart has, and Richard hasn't done an episode in a while, but Richard Stewart's podcast was great. And it's nice to be in that same vein and, and know that there are, commonalities you know there's the same listeners the same people who listen to yours listen to mine listen to mm -hmm. dylan's listen to richard's and that's the audience that i want you know i want an audience that's going to be actively engaged in the topic because i feel like these are the people who are going to take the most out of it you know would it be great to get hundreds of thousands of downloads every episode yeah it was great because that could also convert into you know realistic you know financial stuff i mean don't get me wrong it would be great to do this full time but you know it, it, it's not this, this is not paying the bills. This is, you know, um, you know, I, I do get some income from it, you know, but it's not a tremendous amount of money. So, you know, what do I want? Uh, ideally it would be nice to increase listenership, you know, have, and have the, you know, audience continue to grow. I'd like to have new people come into it. Uh, I think that having beginners come in and look at it from this approach with people on the show who are very experienced, Hopefully that will convert into a, you know, a better experience. But I mean, every community is, is, is different. You know, there's little, you know, there's little sub communities in every niche. And I feel like the, the dart fraud community kind of by default is kind of high level. 
So that's the audience that I catered to. And that's also the audience that generally grew the much because uh, grew the most for me, because when I started this, it really wasn't a focus on Dendra bad. I mean, it, it kind of was, but that's kind of where it went based on, you know, my experiences and audience, you know, audience input. Um, you know, what do I want to get out of this? I don't know. You know, I, why have I done so many episodes? Um, I like the challenge. I like to succeed where other people have failed. And I feel like there's a lot of podcasts out there that came and went. And, you know, I, I'd like to continue going with this, but I want to continue to go in a way that's going to be, you know, relevant. And at the same time, you know, not get buried. I don't want to create an avalanche of content and have it, you know, just go by the wayside. Yeah. You know, when you, the more we talk, the more it's just obvious that a, a website is perfect for you because that allows you, I and mean, you're pretty good at writing. You, you do some solo episodes that you write and those are blog posts and that's what Google eats up and sends to people. And so uh, you, you, you've got a whole audience that is, typing search terms into Google and that goes directly to your blogs and yeah. you embed your episode in the blog of the appropriate topic. And that's a discovery. People can well, find you. That's, that's a good point. And I, I noticed really within the past year that I come up in Google searches. Cause it used to be when I, when I would do like a cold, a cold call or a cold email to a guest, usually it's, you know, scientists or whatnot, I reach out by email. Uh, I used to include a little blurb at the end about, you know, who I was and past guests. Now I don't do that anymore because they go to Google. It shows right up. So you're right. I really should be using Google to my advantage because it would draw people to that. You know, I, I it, again, it's it's really for me, the biggest challenge right now is just getting the the website up in a way that I can update it as frequently yeah. as I want. Because to be honest with you, I, I do. I regret using uh, WordPress. I wish yeah. I would have gone with another program that was more simple. But oh, I, you can you can do that now. You yeah. can just quit WordPress and just move your domain name. Yeah, I know. That's the other thing I have to figure out. I just, I feel like for what I, 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 I don't like stuff that's, that's not user-friendly. And I feel like, it, it, you know, 2023, there really is no excuse to have technology that's not user-friendly. I mean, I'm not, <laughs> you know, I'm not sending a, you know, a, a probe, you know, to Alpha Centauri here. I mean, building a website, billions of people have websites. And, you know, obviously, you know, again, to my disadvantage, I'm not that technologically inclined, but, um, you know, it's frustrating because the other thing is, you know, it's a financial setback because obviously you, you put money into paying for the website and, you know, it's kind of a loss. You kind of have to write that off. But I ideally, you know, I'd like to have something that I could do just with just what you said, you know, have a conversion in something that would be a shorter form where people can go there, get what they need from there, and then hopefully you know, traffic it to the podcast. You know, it's just, it, it, it just, it gets overwhelming because there's so much, you know, and now I, I the solo episodes, I, I, I saved the, the text for all that. So technically I could just cut and paste that, but it's a matter of just finding the right platform to be able to cut and place, cut and paste that, um, you know, into a blog format. So. Yeah, well, um, yeah, that's what I do. And uh, I, it's, I, obviously I've been doing it for a, a while now. And so now I have a pretty good representation on Google. Uh, but that's a, that's a great way to keep my, uh, my episodes current because if, it, if it's still good, if it's evergreen, it, it goes in a blog post or, or it goes on a page that is, uh, is, is picked up by Google. But, uh, so Howard is saying, he needs a website, has the domain, but no website. Howard, what are you going to be using a website for? What, what will that do for you? Uh, it's uh, it's always interesting to see what people want from a website and what they're going to be doing. So, uh, And the thing about a website, you start a website and it eats up your time as well. Mm -hmm. There's There's no such thing as just creating it and leaving it. Because you always got to update it, or else it just, yeah. or else it just dies. And Google's not gonna uh, doesn't like websites that aren't updated. So it's a whole new outreach. The other thing, it's funny that you mentioned that because, you know, you and I are old enough that we were, you know, pre-internet, 
And the very first websites that went up, I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way, but websites that I was on, you know, in when, whenever, when we first got the internet in like 1997, you know, you think it's a good website, it's going to be around forever. No, it's not. There's websites that don't, just don't exist anymore for whatever reason. And you don't think about that at this point in the game, that your website can just become obsolete and just completely just, just disappear just because you don't maintain it. And, and you're right. You have to, you have to maintain it. You have to keep it current. You have to keep it updated. Otherwise it's just, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. So, and that's why having a, a podcast or even a YouTube video, it's kind of nice uh, when you do that a week, that's a pot, that's a post and that, that keeps things relevant. So wait a minute. Um, <laughs> Howard is saying going to follow my advice. And starting small, what are you, uh, are you starting a breeding operation or are you starting a, a Windows 95? <laughs> <laughs> Who here knows Windows? Oh, Windows 95. Uh, XP, XP. XP. <laughs> How many people here know what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah, two, of, two of us probably. Maybe yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so uh, Howard saying wants a website to uh, maintain and create my small business. Okay, but yeah, it's it's yeah, that's good, that's good. And websites are great with that. And uh, and the nice thing about a website, if there's any uh, creators there out in our uh, chat here, if you're a creator, you're making uh, episodes, uh, weekly episodes. Having a website and be an educational outreach is a real easy way to have more episodes uh planned than i mean you can easily have a year's episodes planned just by creating your website figuring out what pages you need and they'll say i'm going to create a uh, podcast episode for each page and em embedded it i mean i whenever i just get so tired of uh doing research to put together i mean like the fogging stuff that I do, the fo last fogging episode, I had to put together an entire a page for that, and I had to figure out how do I explain this, and and I I didn't even do the uh, the illustrations and the pictures, so it was just the text. But it's a lot of work and a lot of energy into that, and whenever I decide, okay, I am just so tired of making these episodes that take a week of my time to put together. I just go to one of my my website pages that doesn't have an embedded podcast, and I say, "Okay, I'm gonna make a podcast for that page." And uh, yeah, it's still a lot of work to write 4,500 words, but um, you know, it just seems like it's a little bit easier. It it, even, it seems kind of like a vacation. Oh, okay, this is easy. I'm just gonna write for this topic, and I'm not gonna have to research. But uh, yeah, benefit to a website. Oh. Very true. Well, do you have a plan for what you're going to do for 2023 as far as uh, episodes? Or um, how you know, far in advance do you do this? It's it's funny because i <laughs> i have a, I have plans, but I, f I find that I think to myself, well, uh, you know, oh god, like I don't have anybody lined up. I got no guests. I know I got no guests. I got nobody lined up. And then I just kind of come up with, and I think it's like, you know, come up with an idea. What can I do? And um, I tried to focus on not just like trying to repeat the same stuff, but like I kind of changed my my attitude. Is just, look, if you can come on the show and you know you, you can tell a story, and you can be interesting and relevant, and and you know brings. I mean, it's obviously it's got to be you know somewhat frog related, but. Um, Everyone doesn't have to be a scientist. And I found out that within the past month or so, it's been getting harder and harder to get researchers on the show. People are, you know, it's not 2020. People are, are back in the field. They're back teaching. They're doing okay. whatever they're doing. And it's not as easy to get on the same page as everybody, which is, you know, fun. It's, it's, it's three years later. But um, I feel like, you know, for the show to keep moving at the momentum that it is, it's I have to kind of be open to having different types of topics in the show because when some like someone mentioned this to me a while back he says it really doesn't if people like the content they're going to listen to it and 
you know, not every episode is going to be a home run and not every topic is going to be a home run. But I feel like if I'm going to limit myself to just having, you know, scientific experts come on, you know, that's not going to be viable in the long term. So I ran the artist series and I'm going to run more artist series because people, you know, people enjoy hearing that stuff. And, um, you know, I, I want to have a more broad palette of, of people to come on the show. And then there's some people that, you know, I've had some guests on and people really enjoy them. And, you know, I'll have them back on again. You know, like I, I take a lot of advice from listeners and people, you know, who make suggestions and whatnot. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's my show. Mm -hmm. And I do what I think is right. And I try to provide everybody with the best possible experience they, that they can. And, you know, what worked in 2020 is going to be different for 2023. So I think learning to adapt and have realistic expectations of what I want to get out of this from a week to week basis. I think that's going to be my goal is, you know, establishing my priorities and producing a show at a pace and at a level of quality that I think is going to be manageable for me because, you know, again, it's not 2020. I have a life too. You have a life, you have family, I have family. Uh, you know, I, I can't necessarily, you know, if, if, if I don't feel like I have something worthy of putting out on a Friday, I'm not going to put it out. If I wait another week or whatever it is, I want to be able to develop that episode enough that when it comes out, people aren't just going to listen to it for five minutes and then, you know, pass by because then I've wasted my time and I've wasted theirs. So, you know, that's, I guess that's if, you, if it, to answer your question, you know, what is my goal for 2023? I think it's going to be to, you know, make sure that the quality and the pace of the show is consistent with what I can provide and what the audience can appreciate and digest. What, what do you think would have to happen for you to make happen to where December 31st, you look back and said, I had an awesome year. Um, that's a good question. I think that so, the fact that so I so often my answer to that would be I survived it. <laughs> that was going to be my answer. Honestly, was the fact that I made it. I, you know, I, I kind of sat back and thought to myself, I'm like, well, I haven't done this since 2020, which is, you know, was, you know, 2020 to 21, 22, 23, you know, it's, it's it's going to be, it's almost four years. And I, and I, I kind of got into such a routine with it. I couldn't really imagine life without it. But yeah, I think the fact that you make it to the end of another calendar year and you think, wow, like I, I did it. That to me is, is satisfying, you know? Um, but again, I feel like things have to evolve and things have to change. I mean, think about how many TV series, you know, come and go. I mean, you want to make make sure that you maintain that quality that you can be that something that you can be proud of. I mean, like think about the Simpsons. The Simpsons have been on for since like since eighty yeah. nine. I mean, I remember watching the Simpsons when they were on the Tracy Ullman show. And you know, my opinion was you know a little rocky start to get going by you know season like three and four. That was like great, but I haven't watched the show in like ten years because I felt like the quality just just went down. Um, you know, so you got to ask yourself, what, what's the long-term goal? And for me, the long-term goal is going to be to provide, you know, provide quality. You know, Netflix will release a series. The series will air 13 episodes and it's gone for, you know, a year, two years, three years or whatever. And hopefully people come back to it. You know, I, I don't want to completely saturate, you know, my podcast, what we're going to create, whatever. I don't want to completely saturate it with episode after episode after episode and then have quality deteriorate. I, I really want it to stay kind of in, in line with what I would expect to get out of it. So if that means releasing episodes on a staggered pace, you know, then, then, you know, so be it. I don't, I just, I don't want to create too much where people just don't have the, the time, you know, to, to take it all in, or I don't have the time to produce it all. So, well, here's, so I throw this out not because I have the answer, but because I ask myself this question. I, if I assuming, cause I, I'm going to make it to the end of this year and I will have, I will have completed my eighth season. And I look back and those seasons, some of those seasons, I have one podcast every week. Sometimes 
uh, you know, every season has different levels of podcast because I'm going through different stages of my life. It's gone on so long that, yeah, I mean, I can, I can look at my episode outreach and I know exactly what was going on during my life. It's like a history of Bill, but I, and then I say, okay, so what's next year going to, going to look like, am I just going to be done with the ninth season, then the 10th season? And the question is, what is it that makes it worth doing another season? Now, um, you know, we're not on the uh, chameleon channel, so uh, this is kind of, <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to, don't want to say that, but uh, I, I, I know right now what is driving me forward is there's so many things that I want to know and I want to learn, and I know that I need to do it now. I need to figure out the dry season. I need to uh, you know, figure out how that can affect longevity if we implement certain aspects of it. Uh, I really want to get to the bottom of uh, fogging and how it works as hydration. And, and there's so many educational things I want to put together for people. I mean, now people are selling eggs. And so all of a sudden I got a, a, I have a whole bunch of people out there who are wondering, how do I take care of a hatchling? Not a three month old, a hatchling. That's like, Gosh, well, you know, by the way, it should be the egg sellers that are doing taking care of this education, but yeah. they're not. So, you know, that hello, this is Bill. That's his thing. So I have things that I I feel like I need slash want I, I want to accomplish. Uh so but that that's what's pushing me forward. That is why I have uh I, I'm going. Th I will be going past the eighth season. I know I'm going to. I'm going to jet past the eighth season, go right into the ninth season because I, I just there's just so much that I want to accomplish. But I mean, I what what keeps podcasters? Good? This is something I want to ask every podcaster. What keeps you going? Why do you need another season? Um, what's it doing for you? And uh, oh, geez, let me say hello. We got. Uh, Two Turtle Toms uh, coming in from Korea. He's I I don't know if you saw um looks like DG Korean. Bill looks like he's in an enclosure. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing, but I didn't want to say uh, it. that's my backyard. <laughs> this is this is where my wife puts me. <laughs> it's okay, I get fogged at night, so I'm okay. I was gonna say the fog is gonna come on and we're gonna see how it hydrates. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is, this is actually, I, I started a cage build. That's my pothos cage. It's got all, uh, mm -hmm. pothos, different varieties of pothos. And then to the other side was all the plants that I was thinking about using. And, and before long, I was just, wait a minute. I kind of like it back there. like that. <laughs> and I haven't finished the, there's no chameleon in there because I haven't finished the cage build. <laughs> but uh, yeah, some, sometimes it happens. You do a really nice build and you think to yourself, I'm not going to put an animal in there. It'll just ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, if I put an animal in there, then I have to close the door, and it's an acrylic door, and so all of a sudden it becomes a mirror oh, for everything in the room. Yeah, and that's yeah. distracting. So, yeah. yeah. All right, I'm gonna have to figure out the compromise mm. here. So, all right. Well, uh, did you have any uh, any comment as far as how many seasons are enough? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I've kind of, one of the things that I've learned in life is that you just kind of know, you'll, you'll know when something's right. You'll know when something is not. And I don't have any intention of, of stopping. I just want to, you know, create a different pace. I mean, even back around Christmas time, you know, you and I were talking, I'm like, look, like I, you know, I, I need a break here. I, I need time to kind of stop and get caught up because the pace is exceeding what I keep up with. And you told me like, oh yeah, I take a break every January. I'm like, son of a bitch. I wish I had done that for the past December three years. In January, by the way. Yeah. Two months. Yeah. And even like, this is the other thing, the other thing I took away from it. Like I started watching the, the numbers and when I didn't air an episode for a week, I still got the same amount of downloads per week. So, yeah. I, you know, I don't, what that means, I don't know that people are still listening. So they might be picking up on old episodes or whatnot. I don't really know. But I feel like taking a break is not the end of the world. And when I did come back after a break, 
the downloads for that weekend, that Friday were like, they went like through the roof. So I feel like also another part of engaging with your audience also is you're going to have to give the audience something to look forward to. So like, for example, all the streaming services, like that's the big thing now. People will watch 10, 15 episodes of a series and then it you know goes away for a couple of months and people are really excited, hopefully when it comes back. So I want to, you know, change that dynamic as well. I mean, that's the kind of thing I've been beating to death this whole live stream is that I... I want the podcast to exist in a way that's not going to outpace me and not outpace, you know, outpace listeners. Because if X amount of people listened on a Friday with a new episode and next week, the same amount of people listened with no new episode, that means, you know, the the, the demographics are the, are the same. You know, I'm still getting the same amount of listeners. I'm still getting the same people, whatever. So, you know, I don't know. I, I have no intentions of stopping. I have no intentions of hanging it up. I just want to, you know, adapt to the times and, you know, just put out something that I, I can say that I'm proud of and put out something that hopefully people are happy to enjoy. Okay. All right. Everybody and, in the uh, chat, we got, uh, we've got people that have uh, just joined us. Uh, Two Turtle Tom from Korea and DG Korean. Uh, are you in Korea? Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris, Zev Green. And uh, so we've got a lot of people have uh, joined in. Do you guys have any questions for Dan? or for me, or about uh, about content creation in general, or websites, or any of these kind of things. Uh, we're going to open it up for any comments. We're, we're coming to the end of the show, and so uh, go ahead. And anything on your mind, uh, we'll, we'll take, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about. You get them in now, because you're not getting another live stream out of me. That's right. <laughs> Dan, Dan is a limited time offer. I mean, you you see me all the time, but Dan, you ain't gonna do this again. And uh, uh, Chris is asking, how do you start things out? So uh, yeah, say you want to start a podcast or a video. Uh, how how do you start? Have a plan, I guess. Think about what you want to do, and figure out ways to do it you know, understand it's not going to necessarily come out perfect the first time and you know just be willing to make mistakes and be even more willing to learn from them you know find out what you want to do and you know look at other people who do it the way that you want to do it find people that you look up to look at what they do and somehow translate that into what will work for you like i i looked at bill i listened to well i didn't look look at bill i listened to bill um I listen to Bill. I listen to you know Dylan. I listen to well Richard. I listen to all these other people who kind of put out the same content that I wanted to do, and I took the positive stuff away from their show. And I thought to myself, well, how can I convert this into something that will work for me? So you know, find people you look up to, you know, or, or just talk to people if you want to do something. You know, pick the person's brain. And say, hey, look, I'm interested in this. What are your suggestions? And, you okay. Know. All right. Well, yeah, I've been wanting to start a YouTube channel with my reptiles. Just no watch. Okay. So, uh, Chris. Oh, yeah. And then, well, well uh, <laughs> DG Korean's on there too. Same. Okay. So, I'm going to say just in a nutshell. Well, uh, first of all, you know, I hope you listen to the podcast, Reptile Entrepreneur and the Niche Content Creator, because I do a lot of this. Uh, but in a nutshell, what I would say is figure out what you want to get out of it. That's your. Uh, your purpose, why are you doing this, your promise, how you're going to, what you're going to provide to an audience. And then, uh, I I know it's a cliche, but it is just start. Because uh, say, say, come up with a plan for 10 episodes and actually film two episodes. You're, You're for YouTube. So what is your style? So just do a bunch of test films and try to put together videos and then put them out and then go on to the next one. Because when you start, nobody's going to know you're there. Nobody's going to be looking at it. You're going to be getting like five views. It doesn't matter. And those people just uh, accidentally clicked on because they were looking for Taylor Swift. So uh, it doesn't matter. And you got to realize it doesn't matter. It's a lot easier to get better incrementally for the next video and then better for the next video than it is to become perfect and just start and have a, a awesome video. So it's really, 
it's really jumping in, having a plan, knowing what you want, jumping in. Even if you don't know what you want, jump in. You can always restart the channel if it's a complete disaster. But the thing is, there's only so much that you can plan. Uh, and then you're not going to be learning anything more. And whatever you learn, you're not going to understand the uh, significance of what you're learning unless you've actually done it. And you're saying, oh, my goodness, uh, these are my problems. And then you will appreciate what you uh, what you are learning. And so that that's that's what I would say in a nutshell. Uh, let's see. Um, what would be your number one piece of advice for someone who wants to create a business around art? Um, don't, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, you know, art and creativity is, is a difficult thing to translate into an income. And I'll, I'll tell you from personal experience, my, you know, my collegiate background I went through a bunch of changes. I ended up settling up with a degree in English, which is essentially, you know, excuse my bad English, but didn't really turn out much into shit. Um, it, it can be difficult. You know, I thought that I had this great skill and that I could do all this creative writing. Unfortunately, it, it didn't pan out into a, something that was financially viable. Can you turn, you know, artist, you know, artistry into a career? It, it just depends on how you translate that into a skill. Like, for example, with English, you know, I knew I wasn't going to write stories for a living. It just wasn't going to happen. So I ended up getting into copywriting. You know, you 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 fill that void where somebody else can, um, somebody else needs you. You got to find someone who needs you, someone who needs your art, needs your writing, needs your music, whatever. And you have to be able to do it in such a way that you maintain creative control over what it is that you make, but at the same time, you know, you satisfy that need for them enough that it becomes financially, you know, profitable to you. Starting a business in art is 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 difficult. It, it is, and um, sometimes it, it can be, you know, rough because people feel like, you know, they're 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 losing control over their, um, you know, over the creativity. You get you know, someone on a board or, you know, a creative director or whatever doesn't like the way you do it. Um, it can be tough. You know, people like, for example, people who work for uh, that big animation company in Florida. Um, you know, I've heard some bad stories about people, you know, losing creative control and kind of being overworked. It, it, it can be tough. I, I guess if you wanted to get into a career like that, I would say, um, Go into it and go in, get into something that you're going to continue to love what you do every day. So if you can build a career off of art and you look forward to it every day, then you've succeeded. How you meet that end, I don't know. To be honest, I would talk to as many professional artists as possible. Um, like the artist series, um, Ron Rundo, he does his vivarium art full time. He was able to make that into a very, very niche career that he does very well with. Um, Laura Airy Lee. Uh, it's more of a side thing for her. So it's two different approaches, you know, and I feel like the best thing to do would be like anything else. Do what's, do what works for you, you know, do what makes you happy, do what you can make a living off of. And don't, you know, don't settle for something because it's very easy to take something that you really enjoy and that you really, really love and you're really passionate about. And once you start you know, taking criticism and whatnot from other people who don't know what they're talking about, it can really suck the passion out of it. And, you know, I, I know people who, uh, you know, personally speaking, I know people who did art for a living and, you know, it was tough. You know, they were doing graphic design and whatnot. They were producing products with people, you know, you have, you know, some VP or some, you know, creative director come in like, well, you know, scrap all this. And it's like, well, I spent, you know, I spent the past week on this. You know, it can be tough. You know, I don't know. I, I guess that's probably like really, really like negative um sounding advice but do you know look man just what find what you do well you know and do it and do it as best as you can do you know what art uh blue to uh, blue collar keeper i'm looking at your instagram here uh oh he's he's amazing he makes amazing but stuff. but what I kind of art you for advice. <laughs> yeah i'm gonna follow that what what kind of art um uh, do you know what kind of art he's talking about or blue collar caper can you type in what kind of art you're talking about are you talking about creating terrariums are you uh, do you do paintings? What what kind of art uh, are you doing? Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and give my perspective on on this. Uh, for people who want a business around art, the uh, the biggest Achilles heel for 
artists, generally speaking, is the same for people trying to start businesses. It And that's marketing. You're excellent at doing art, at writing, at whatever you do, 3D printing, just business. Everybody's excellent at that one thing, but you can't get customers if you don't have a marketing outreach. And so if I was to make a, a one minute, 60 second piece of advice to someone who wants to create a business out of, well, anything is to pick a social media platform that you enjoy and become insanely good at it. Whether it's Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, you enjoy taking pictures, that's Instagram. You enjoy doing videos. Well, short form video, you can do any of them. Uh, long form video, that's YouTube. Whatever you're good at, focus on that and make that part of your day is getting insanely good at that because that is going to be you're out. That's how you're going to get customers. And if you're an artist, you know, say you're, say you draw, uh, sp Oh, speaking more in general. Okay. So your artist, you have your Instagram to where you are, you're drawing and you're drawing on Instagram. You're letting everybody watch you draw. And so you build up that audience and sooner or later you've created an audience that will purchase your art. If you create terrariums, like I saw some awesome terrariums on your, uh, Instagram just now, you do terrarium builds and people will get to know you uh, that uh, with uh, for that. And I'm not sure how you would sell that unless you're selling like classes or how to do it or terrariums themselves, I suppose. Uh, so whatever it is, social media has made it easy for us to create a, a group around the very niche thing that we're good at. And so uh, what I would say is make the social media platform of your choice a priority to learn how to use it you can even get a class if you need it um uh, i i actually have uh I, i've taken classes two cl two classes from two two uh, experts in instagram i've taken two classes and uh, you know i compare contrast and i get i want to be really good at it and that's the way you excel and the way you you know, especially Instagram is really hard to grow nowadays, but uh, you know how to do it and you just stick with it. Uh, so that's my, uh, and he says, uh, we're speaking in general. Okay. So we gave good general advice here. Art's tough. It's, it is, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, cause you compete with other artists and it's, it, it can, it can be, it can be tough. I mean, it's applies for, for any job, but like, you know, it's, I mean, my my only frame of reference, honestly, would be with with music because I I did music, you know, somewhat semi professionally. And one of the things that I learned from that was early on in the game, like if you want to get your content out there, you got to be willing to like kind of give it away, give it away for like the first you know, um, you know, couple of years until it takes off, and then you can start charging it. Like if you want to sell prints or something like that, um, you know, like back then you know you're in a band you know you, you play anywhere you can you get in front of anybody anybody you know what i mean and i guess the same thing with artists just try and get yourself out there enough that you you know you get in front of the right person who's going to be able to appreciate that and hopefully translate that to something that you could turn into a job you know, okay. don't get it get it out there get get the exposure that you need all right howard's asking i've been using youtube studio is there a better software uh i don't what are you using youtube studio for that's as far as I know, that's just for you to load up stuff into YouTube. Uh, if you're talking about <laughs> video editing software, if you're on Apple, iMovie is good enough. Uh, if you're on a PC, uh, there, there's, I know there's some free stuff. DaVinci is an awesome program. It's uh, very intense, but it's an awesome program. Uh, so, uh, it, let me know, are you talking about an editing program? And we, we can pick that back up. Uh, DG Korean, I'll have to jot down some stuff. Mike Titula told me the same. And he's talking about uh, starting a YouTube channel. And yeah, you, you know what? That is what you're going to hear from anybody who has a show. Because anybody who has a show has realized how much you can't prepare for. You cannot you can you can spend your entire life 
you can take classes, you can uh, prepare in your mind, but we all know that we learned once we did it. And I mean, uh, looking back at me uh, doing the podcasts or videos, it, it would be so hard for me to tell you everything that you needed because they're so individual. Uh, your podcast and your videos, it's not like we're creating a movie for the cinema. It's not like we're creating a TV show uh, that is like homogenized. And so it's going to be attractive to millions and millions of people there. What we're doing and the magic of social media is that we have personalized niches. Dan does amphib amphibians. I do chameleons and then I do entrepreneurship in the reptile community. And these things are so individual that our personality is a huge factor in what we produce because we're doing it. And so nobody, it's very hard for somebody to tell you how to do something because it's not standardized. It's very personal. And so you've got to just start and just assume that it's gonna you're gonna suck for a while and your first episodes are gonna be embarrassing and that's actually a badge of honor everybody loves to say at uh, 500 episodes ah go look at my first episodes they were horrible ha <laughs> ha <laughs> and we all laugh because it's true for all of us and that's just just go through it it's not only just something that happens i think it's a necessary part of growing up in podcasting or YouTubing or doing any of this. So uh, bite the bullet, jump in and make some horrible stuff because that's the way you get to making good stuff. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, very important. Um, do you have any dart frogs? Yes, I have an Azurius. I love my little Azurius. <laughs> okay, let's see if we have, uh, uh, let's do... All right, let's uh, we'll, we'll take uh, one more, uh, unless someone puts, wants something very interesting down there. It's one thing to attract an audience, but keeping an audience can be the most difficult thing, in my opinion. You're absolutely right, Howard. If you look at social media right now, the focus is on discovery. It's a focus is on building your followership, and that is, I'll say it's in my opinion, but it's I feel so strongly about it. I'll say the fact is that you we need to have a plan for what do we do with people once we collect them once we have like i and i say on chameleon academy i've got twenty six thousand or something followers what am i going to do with them do i really need thirty six thousand fifty six thousand well what am i going to do with them and the answer is you take care of them why are they there and so we all, any one of us who has an outreach, we have to have a little bit of discovery and stuff like stupid Instagram reels that go out there to bring in people. But we need also, we can't get caught up in doing that 100% of the time. We need to have the meat and potatoes, the things that people come to us for, the, the very quality educational or the experience, whatever it is we've promised our audience. And so... Yeah, you are absolutely correct. And it is a problem in today's social media with the attention in on growth instead of taking care of the people who are your audience. Because, and I, I guess I can just, <laughs> I'll say one more thing. You, you get me on this topic and I may go on forever, but I'll just say one more thing. Uh, if we don't take care of our audience, we are going to get caught up in an endless cycle of growth, which on the out, outside sounds great. We are all judged by how big our accounts are. But the fact is, if we don't take care of our people, if we don't keep the real fans, the real followers, those numbers are going to be empty. And we are just going to be having people that just come because they want to see us get bitten by a chameleon. And <laughs> nobody's going to be there because they want to learn how to take care of uh, chameleons and advanced fog and all that kind of stuff. So we, if we don't take care of the people that come, we're going to end up trapped in a hamster wheel of constant growth. And that's all our account is going to be about because we're just going to have a bunch of bots and people from India and Brazil who are wonderful, but 
often are just there to see us get bit by a chameleon or something. So very, very good point. So, all right, we can uh, probably start coming to a close. And uh, Reefy does want to know how many chameleons do you have, Bill? The answer is, I don't know. And I like it that way, because if I don't know, then I don't have to tell my wife when she asks me. Uh, but uh, th th that's what I used to say. I don't have to say that anymore because now she has more reptiles than I do. And so she is uh, trying not to answer me when I ask her how many she has. So, you know, tables have turned. So, all right. Uh, we can uh, close this up. Dan, do you have any um any final words for these adoring fans? Oh God, I <laughs> um, it, just with anything else in life, if there's something that you enjoy and you want to use your abilities to create, you know, just don't let anything stand in your way. Just do it. You know, if you want to become a creator, you want to become someone who does something that's that's niche. You know, just do it. You know, get up one morning, make the first step, do it. So I my advice and um you know oh, thank you bill for having me on it's you know my my first Absolutely. my first live stream so i hope my uh my, my deadpan delivery came off as well in video as it normally does oh, in, oh uh, of course we, it was it was great having you <laughs> and and i'm gonna echo what he says um be careful thinking about something for too long um i fell into that trap when i started uh i i thought of i wanted to start a podcast i think i for some reason i think it's two years it may have been one year i don't know uh, but it took such a long time for me to actually get started <clears throat> now back then it, it was a little bit more difficult to start than it is now uh, but right now i would say if you want to start when i say just start i mean don't think about starting. Say, I want to start, then say, okay, I'm going to start. What are the things I need to do? Make a list, go through that list, whatever medium you're you're interested in, and just make an episode. Stop thinking about it because if you think about it, it will just take, everybody can tell you, if you think about it, it will take too long and you'll just not, not do it. And don't, over prepare. I got to tell you how many, I'll tell you a story before I go. I, I, uh, I took a class in live productions. Uh, it was, uh, someone offering it. I said, people who are really into this, they do this and they charge and they got millions of dollars. And so, okay, I'm going to take this three day, uh, seminar, three day course, uh, conference, in doing live productions. Uh, and I can tell you, I got some good stuff out of it, but not necessarily, I didn't really need it before starting. But the thing is, we had these breakout sessions and we got to know people and there were people in those breakout sessions that this was their third time taking this conference for creating live sessions. And they hadn't done a live session yet. As I... You, they were preparing every year and I'm going to do it this year. I'm going to do it this year. It's like, come on. No, you're not. Don't go to another class. Just do it. And if you got a problem, then go to a class. But the thing is, it's so easy to think that you're doing it by preparing. Nah, you're not. You're not. Do it. Just start and build the plane while it's flying. That's That's what I got to say. So, oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> Two favorite hobby educators. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And DJ Korean, thank you. Thank you very much. So, and everybody, I want to appreciate, I appreciate you coming here and enjoying us for joining us for this live, live session. I've got an interview with Dan that uh, I released as a podcast and as a video interview on the YouTube channel. And so I invite you, if you'd like to hear more about our conversation, you can go listen to that. And if you have any questions about starting, uh, 
a, a, a an outreach, a YouTube, a podcast, a business. That's what the reptile entrepreneur is here for. We've got a lot of episodes. And let me know if there's something more that you're looking for, because really these outreaches are here to serve the community. The whole reason I started this is because uh, there were so many people wanting to start businesses and wanting to start an outreach, and they didn't know how to do it. It's like they knew every other part of how to do it, but not this one part, this one part. And everybody had a different part they needed. So I say, I, let's let's do a show for this and to support the people. So I uh, please use this as a resource to help you create an, a side business and outreach that you really want to that can help build our community. That's what we're here for. So, all right, everybody, thank you very much. And uh, I guess we'll say goodbye. Dan, thank you. Thank you. And everybody who, who the, the, you know, the, the comments and the questions, um, thank you. I, it's, I like to interact with people and it's, it's interesting to hear people's input. And, you know, for everyone who listened to my show and Bill's, um, you know, thank you. Appreciate I appreciate the I appreciate the interest. Yeah, and it's it's rewarding to see that you can create something that other people appreciate. Yeah, and so, Amphibicast is just an awesome show on amphibians, and so I'm just I am rooting for yeah, you. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> keep you, all keep right. doing that because it, it and, and uh, not not to prolong this, but I, I am really encouraged and happy with how many people are starting these kind of niche shows and podcasts. And so, I mean, this is, it is awesome to see what we're doing in this community. And so uh, I love, love seeing that. Anyway, everybody, thank you very much. And we'll see you 